one thing that uh, we, we, we see here is everybody continue, well, every, every panelist and speaker continues to be excited by the possibilities of the internet. Uh, I think that the possibilities that keep people excited are those of uh, openness. Openness is a very open term in itself. Uh, it has a very open definition and it's open to all kinds of interpretations. But basically the idea of being able to access information, to create and uh, uh, expand and distribute your own information and creation, uh, the ability to communicate uh, cross-border has been mentioned uh, with, with the impact and complexities. Um, we have seen in reactions from the audience that uh, uh, rulemaking that's not participatory and transparent is unwelcome on the internet. Uh, the words chilling effects have not yet been spoken, but I think that ACTA, which has been mentioned, uh, many of the implications of the way it was mentioned here, uh, refer to the fact that you can have chilling effects, you can scare people uh, from uh, touching others' content, interpreting it, uh, redistributing it, uh, maybe through copies. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, there will be, even in, in the ACTA space, in the ACTA discussion, a uh, serious uh, debate uh, between two opposite possible chilling effects. The chilling effect of people not wanting to create because they feel their creations would not be protected on the net and people who would feel that any form of sharing or access to information would be a violation of new rules, uh, and that would be an even more serious effect. I think that uh, the, that discussion goes to the core. I, I, I'm only addressing it because I think it does go to a practical example today of a principled discussion on, on these core principles and values of the internet. Uh, the study that Nathaniel mentioned, and I hope we can tweet out the, the reference for that, uh, on the value of fair use economies in the U.S. is impressive. Uh, and it, but it comes exactly a week after the GAO of the U.S. Congress uh, made a study, published a study on how, during this, uh, in other panels this meeting, the Internet's core values, this ability to uh, distribute content easily, uh, to create your own applications and so forth, I think that they've brought a challenge to a bifurcation that took place 30 or 40 years ago in, in, in the law schools of Europe. I may be wrong because I'm not a lawyer, so I'm risking this statement out. Uh, there was a huge bifurcation in which uh, people were very concerned about the effects of intimacy and on intimacy and privacy of uh, the fact that you could have huge databases, huge computer databases. They were not on the internet. There was no internet when this was discussed. So it was mostly uh, limited access to them that was of concern. And so the fact that these databases appeared uh, actually made it easy for the legal tradition there to be applied to a part of the privacy problem, which is personally identifiable data, and not uh, intimacy, which is a much murkier uh, world. 